In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We gather today on Sunday, December 24th, for the celebration of the fourth Sunday of Advent. This year, uh, it's a very strange Advent. Again, this Sunday morning is the fourth Sunday of Advent. The fourth Sunday of Advent celebration really lasts about 12 hours, and the fourth week of Advent is non-existent, because tonight is Christmas Eve. So most parishes are having morning Masses for fourth Sunday of Advent, then three hours later, people come back for the long slate of Christmas Eve Masses. So a great day to celebrate. The fulfillment of the Lord's promise to David comes in the person of Jesus, born of Mary. God's kingdom does indeed endure forever. As we prepare to celebrate this in today's Eucharist, let us ponder how we make present the kingdom and sing of God's goodness to the world. Lord Jesus, your kingdom endures forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you remain faithful even though we sin against you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our rock and our savior. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, go, do whatever you have in mind for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went and I have destroyed all of your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. i 
proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said my kindness is established forever in heaven. You have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Hey, reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel, the good news, according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with the man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Again, we celebrate this Sunday morning, December 24th, the fourth Sunday of Advent. Uh, all the candles on our and your Advent wreath should be lit. That's a beautiful symbol. That's the brightest that that Advent wreath will be because we are ready to celebrate the birth of the light of the world. That is what Jesus said about himself. I am the light of the world. And that's what we're going to celebrate again later on today as we get into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. But first of all, the last person in this Advent drama is Mary. As I mentioned last week, the the three main characters of the Advent drama are Isaiah the prophet, John the Baptist, and Mary the Virgin Mother. Mary was young, we think maybe even a teenager. She was betrothed to Joseph, that means engaged, but not yet married, of course not yet living together. I'm sure they had their wedding plans to go to their local synagogue and have the the local rabbi bless their marriage and they would live as husband and wife. Then this amazing event happened. She was visited by an angel from heaven and told that of all the women of history, 
She alone was chosen to be the mother of the Messiah. Naturally, she had questions. She had not relations with a man. How is it possible that she could become pregnant and bear a child? Well, the angel really didn't give an explanation, and we can't really give an explanation ourselves 2,000 years later of a virgin birth. But the angel simply said, trust in God. Trust in the Holy Spirit. This will happen to you. And Mary could have said, it's too complicated. I don't know what you're talking about. What am I going to tell Joseph? Uh, this is too much. But in all humility, she said, if this is God's will, let it be done to me. Let God's will be done. And that's why we honor Mary so often during the year. We have many holy days uh, honoring Mary, the Immaculate Conception, the Assumption, her birthday, the Annunciation, all those great feasts. And each time we honor Mary, we are asked to imitate Mary in two ways. To imitate, first of all, her surrender, her willingness to surrender to God, all her wedding plans, all her other plans, and simply say that God's will be done. So many times it's our will that gets in the way. As I mentioned last week, our ego gets in the way, and we need to kind of squash that ego and allow God to be first in our lives. That's the first lesson we learned from Mary, to be humble and to surrender to the will of God. And the second lesson is to bring Christ into the world. Mary literally did that. She birthed Christ in Bethlehem, as we'll celebrate later on today and tomorrow. But we are asked to bring Christ in the world by our words and our actions. That's what it means to be called a Christian, that we are a Christ bearer, a Christ carrier. And we bring Christ in the world by the way we love one another. The greatest Christmas present you can give to people is not wrapped in any kind of box or special paper or ribbons. The greatest present we can give to others is presence. P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E. Be present to others. Give them yourself, your time, your love. God bless you. Let us stand and profess what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Drop down dew from above you heavens, and let the clouds rain down the just one. Let the earth be opened and bring forth a Savior who will hear the needs we place before you. For the church, who daily endeavors to make known God's kingdom, that determination and joy mark her work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peoples of the world, that cooperation between nations be a sign that God's home encompasses all the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, May we create a home for God's people where all are welcome. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, for those suffering during these trying times, for those who are joining us in prayer, both remotely and in person, and for all the personal mass intentions we bring before the Lord in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Emmanuel, God with us, help us make a world where all will have a voice and a place at the table of life. May we be renewed by your coming and heed your calling to build a more just world. May no one go hungry, be lonely, or deprived of the promised salvation of Christmas. We pray through Christ our Lord.
pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord bless you. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For all the oracles the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As the Savior's command, formed by his divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us share with each other a sign of peace. of God, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Son of Mary, how blessed are we who share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. stars of night, your people's everlasting light, O Christ, Redeemer of us all, we pray you hear us when we Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. On behalf of Archbishop George Leo Thomas, I wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks to God. God.